everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So in my previous video in this series, we had learned many different types of functions to move our turtle around the screen. And those were the forward, back, left and right functions. Now, before I continue on, I want to make sure that you guys check out my previous video. Please do before watching this one so you'll have a thorough understanding of what I'll be covering in today's video. Anyway, today we are going to be diving in deeper into drawing shapes in the turtle module. We are going to be filling in shapes with color and you might even get to do some fun doodles. Are you guys ready to start coding? Well then stay tuned because I'll be right back. Welcome back guys. So like you should know, throughout my previous video, we have only been drawing shapes that are just outlines. But that doesn't mean that we can't fill them in with color. To start, let's go ahead and tell the computer what color you want to fill the shape with. But first, as you can see, I have a new file already open on my computer and we have the three lines of code. So make sure you guys also have the same um, on your screen too. All right, so let's tell the computer what color we want to fill our shape with. So I'm gonna go ahead and write pen.fillcolor and in parentheses, I'm gonna open single quotes and write orange. So now we have to signal to the computer that we want to start filling the shape in with this specific color. And to do that, all you do is write pen.begin underscore fill and empty parentheses. Now you guys can begin drawing any shape you would like to draw. You can also free draw by giving the pen directions to move it around. And you can use the function that we learned in the previous video. Or you can all continue watching this video and follow along with me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose how about a circle for the shape I want to draw. Pen.circle and in parentheses, I'm gonna write the number 50. So now we need to tell the computer to stop drawing the shape, right? So you can finish the color filling process. So to do that, write pen.end underscore fill and empty parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my file and I'm going to run it. Ta-da, a nice orange circle. So now, did you know that the turtle module also provides us with built-in functions that we can use to create some really cool drawings? Well, let's go over them now. Now, the first function that I'm gonna be showing you guys is the circle function, and it's used to create, you guessed it, circles. Now, the circle function takes up to three parameters, all of which are INT types. So those three parameters are radius, extent, and steps. Now when you use this function, you use at least one of these parameters, which will be used as the radius or size input. So if we wrote this code, pen.circle, and in parentheses, 100, it would result in a radius with the radius, it would result in a circle with the radius of 100. Now this is the simplest way to draw circles, but what if we included two parameters? Well then, it would be the radius and the extent, or distance parameters. So if you wrote this code, just go ahead, add a comma, and want the number 180 to our previous line. Then we are telling the computer to draw a circle with a radius of 100, but draw it only to the extent of 180 degrees. So if I go ahead and run this code, I should get exactly half a circle or a semicircle. So finally, if we use all three parameters in the circle function, the third parameter steps, which also means direction, would change the direction of the drawing by the value passed into it. Now write this line of code, pen.circle, and in parentheses write the numbers 200, 270, and 30. This line of code tells the computer to draw a circle with the radius of 200, but only to the extent of 270 degrees, and turn the pen by 30 degrees as it is drawing. Now that's a complex set of instructions, but it definitely results in something fun. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what this, um, the output would be. So it draws our orange frozen circle, and look at that. 
So you can see it kind of drew some sort of swirl. And there are so many other types of doodles that you can draw using the circle function. So the next function I want to share with you all is called the stamp function. And just as it sounds, this function stamps a copy of the shape you select each time you use it. Now to see this function in action, we first need to create a copy of the turtle object, set it to the turtle shape, and finally make it green. So first I'm gonna close all of these tabs I have open, and I am actually going to Um, so now what you guys should do is create a new file and make sure to have these three lines of code the same three lines of code so you can just um, copy and paste it into a new file. So here is where we're going to be having some fun stamping some turtle shapes. So first um, we need to set uh, or create a copy of the turtle object. So to do that write turtle underscore stamp equals turtle dot turtle and empty parentheses. Our next line of code will be um, we'll be setting it to the turtle shape, right? So what we have to do is turtle underscore stamp dot shape and then parentheses open your single quotes and write turtle because that is the shape you want our stamp to be in. And then finally, our um, next line of code will be to tell the computer what color we want our stamp to be. And since turtle, we're gonna um, make our stamp green. So write turtle underscore stamp dot color and in parentheses, open your single quotes and write green. Awesome. Now let's hide the line that is usually shown when moving the turtle object since you want to see the stamps. So just go ahead and write another line of code that says turtle.stamp.pen up. So this will make sure that the shape of the pen is not shown so we can see all the stamps clearly. And now the fun part. So to start um, stamping, we simply just need to move our turtle to the position we want to stamp and then use the function. But for now, I just want my stem to be right in the center of the page, so I don't have to tell the computer where to move it. I don't have to write like forward or back. So what I'm just gonna do is write turtle underscore stamp dot stamp and empty parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead, save this file. Let's run it and see what happens. Wow, so see how that stamps your turtle shape? Well, now that you know the code how to stamp um, your turtle shape, I'm gonna ask you guys for a favor. I want you to try and create four or three more turtle stamps. You already have created one now, so I want you to create three more, which will all be in the shape of a square. So one like in the left-hand corner, right-hand corner, in the bottom right, and bottom left. You think you can do that? Well, pause this video and try it on your own. Okay, so as you can see on my screen, this is the code that you should have typed into your shell to create our four turtle stamps. Now let's go ahead and run this code and see how it looks. First, we have to save it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run our file on module. Wow, so look at that. And things can get way more interesting when you combine the stamp function with for loops. Do you guys think what I'm talking about? Well, let me, well now I'm going to be showing you guys another file with code that I have already written for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it now. Okay. So this code will actually create an amazing turtle spiral. So if you want, you can pause this video and try this code on your own. Um, so also FYI, all the um, lines of code that are in red are actually comments that I've made. So you guys don't have to um, type those into your shell. I've, those comments are just telling you what each line of code is doing or what it's for. So all you would have to write is like import turtle, import random, stamp equals, and um, yeah. So you don't have to write the comments. Now, executing all of this code will result in something like this. 
Awesome, right? Now just like the circle function, the stamp function provides us with endless possibilities for drawings and even games. So you guys can definitely try out different shapes and colors to see what you can create. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this now. And the final function, oh, and before I actually move on, if you do want a copy of um, this code so you guys can try try it out on your own, then you can let me know in the, my social media handles and I can send you a copy. Okay, so the final function that I will be sharing with you all is called the write function. So if you ever want to write text onto your screen, then this is the best function to use. It's actually similar to the print function. So go ahead, open a new file, and um, copy and paste the same three lines of code. Import turtle, pen equals turtle.turtle, and pen.highturtle. Now go ahead and write this code. Pen equals turtle dot turtle and empty parentheses. Next, go ahead um, and write pen dot write and open your parentheses and open uh, double quotes and write um, any phrase you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and write turtles rock. This for it to relate to the turtle module. Now the code that we just wrote will output to this. So as you can see, um, it has actually printed out or wrote um, the code, the phrase turtles rock on, um, in the output. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? But how about we make this a little bit more interesting? I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two lines of code. And um, I'm going to change my font. That will be easy to read. I'm gonna change the size and I'm gonna make it like a normal type font. So it won't be bold or italicized. So I'm gonna write pen.write and in parentheses, open your double quotes and write the phrase you would like to, for it to um, print out. So I'm gonna write turtles rock comma, font equals, and then an, open another set of parentheses, open another set of double quotes and write open sans, that is the type of font I want to use, comma 60, that 60 is telling the size of the font, and finally, the type of font I want. So I'm gonna write normal. And make sure to close both sets of parentheses. So now, if I save this file and run it, executing this code, we get this. So I bet you all are getting excited about all the wonderful possibilities this function and other functions can provide us while coding, right? Well, there's so much fun things you can do. So this is actually the end of part 17 video in the Coding for Kids in Python video series. So in my next video, we will actually be ending chapter six of this book by um, having some fun with the fun activities of chapter six. So trust me, the activities that I'll be going over, the outputs are very, very cool. So please do make sure to stay tuned on Empty Station um, for more book reviews and of course coding videos. Bye everyone and stay safe.